How's it going guys? Welcome back to Blake Check. If you're new to the channel, my name is Blake. It's nice to meet you. If you're interested in my perspective as an early EV adopter, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Now, if you've been following along for a little bit, you'll be familiar with these two cars behind me. First, that's my 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance Stealth Edition. And over here, this is the most recent addition to our garage. This is our 2023 brand new Volkswagen ID4 Pro S rear wheel drive. I recently uploaded a couple videos with the ID4 where we took delivery of it and and then a full walk around video where we went over the exterior, the interior, and some of the performance specs on it. Those two videos will be linked in the description below. Go ahead and check those out if you haven't already done so. Today, we're gonna to be taking the ID4 on its maiden voyage, its first road trip to Flagstaff, Arizona. We live in Phoenix, Arizona, so Flagstaff is only like a two and a half hour drive, but we figured this would be a good opportunity to check out the actual range on the ID4 Pro S, as well as test it in some high altitude, cold temperature climates. So without further ado, let's load up the car and get going. One thing I want you guys to check out is the cargo mat that I installed in the ID4. The ID4 actually doesn't come with any cargo pads at all, there's nothing in the trunk or in the cabin, which I thought was really weird. So I went ahead and picked up this Tough Pro cargo mat for the cargo area to protect it from scratches, as well as these lace fit mats for the cabin. So if you're interested in either of these, I'll have them linked in the description below. Go ahead and check those out. But without further ado, it's time to get all of this in there. And we are off. I've got wifey in the car next to me and we have the dogs in the back seat. They're looking comfy back there. I charged the ID4 to 100% before we left. We've been driving for a little bit. The current range estimate on the ID4 is sitting at 302 miles. Let me flip the camera around so you guys can see. And it looks like our final destination is 149 miles. So I don't think we're gonna have to stop to charge at all between here and the cabin up in Flagstaff. So there's not a whole lot that's gonna happen between here and our final destination, but there are a few really cool driver assistance and comfort features that make long road trips like this a breeze in the ID4, but I can't really show you guys that until we get on the freeway. So we'll check in again in a few minutes. All right, now that we are on some open road away from that crazy Phoenix traffic, I wanted to show you guys some of the cool driver assistance features and comfort features features in the ID4 that make road trips a breeze. Like I showed you guys in the review video of the ID4, the first is what's called travel assist. That is essentially Volkswagen's version of autopilot. And to activate it, you have to go through a series of button pushes. I don't love how difficult it is to activate, first of all. Um, but once you get it turned on, it's actually really intuitive and really nice. I'll show you guys right now. First, you have to turn on cruise control by pressing this button up here, and then you'll set the speed that you wanna be at. And then finally, the third button press is down here, and that, you'll see, will turn on travel assist. And that'll just keep you centered in your lane, and it'll help maintain the distance between you and the car in front of you. Much like Tesla's autopilot, it uses a camera that's actually located up here on the opposite side of this glass. Um, and I think there is a cabin camera down here that will monitor your eyes to make sure that you're still facing forward. And just like in Tesla's autopilot, you have to give the steering wheel some nudges every once in a while to keep it engaged. Um, what is cool is that you can kind of adjust your position in the lane without fully disengaging travel assist, which is really nice. In Tesla's autopilot, as soon as you kind of take over the steering wheel, uh, autopilot will disengage. Um, but that's a pretty brief overview of travel assist. We're probably gonna be using it for most of this drive. Um, it's really nice. Um, but the second thing I wanna go over is the back massager in the ID4. So both the driver's seat and the passenger seat have a back massager. And to turn that on, you just reach down in the door well between the door and the seat. And it's kind of by where the other seating position buttons are. Um, it's back here, if you guys can see it, you just tap that button. And what that's gonna do is adjust the lumbar support up and down and in and out to kind of give you a light massage while you're driving. If you guys are like me and you are an old person and a young person's body and you have lower back pain, then you know that sitting in an upright position like this on road trips for a long time can really aggravate that lower back pain. But it's really nice that they were able to turn lumbar support into a nice little luxury feature in the ID4. But like I was saying, there's not a whole lot of exciting stuff that's gonna happen between here and Flagstaff, Arizona. So we'll check in with you guys again when we get to the cabin. Okay, so we made it here to Flagstaff, Arizona. I would be lying to you guys if I told you that I wasn't feeling super anxious on the drive up here. As we started to get higher and higher in elevation, um, and especially as those temperatures started to drop, the estimated range on the ID4 really started to tank really fast. Um, so we got here with about 20%. As I told you guys, we didn't expect to have to charge 
between our house and the cabin up here. Um, but we are at an Electrify America station um, because we figured that we go ahead and charge up a little bit tonight rather than um, wait till tomorrow when there's gonna be more traffic and we're gonna be having to like fight for uh, charging stall. So this is gonna be my first time using Electrify America. I'm not really sure what to expect. So I'm gonna flip the camera around so you guys can see what I see. Looks like you just grab the DC fast charging cable, plug it into the car. This is really hard to do one-handed. Let me see if I can get some better grip on this thing. Okay, plugged in. Looks like it's connecting to my car and we are charging. So I ended up moving back over to this hyperfast stall. Um, I stopped charging so that I could get some good footage for you guys over there. And for some reason that made it so that that stall would not connect to my car again. But I plugged into this hyperfast stall over here, this 350 kilowatt stall, um, and we started charging no problem. So let's hop in the car and check out the charge progress. Looks like it will be 25 minutes to 80%. Let's see if I can find out what our charge rate is. Looks like we're charging at 121 kilowatts, which is not bad. Um, I think I read that the ID4, at least this 2023 model year with the new SK on cells, is capable of charging up to 180 kilowatts. Looks like we're not getting that. Um, so hopefully we charge up pretty fast because we are blocking this 350 kilowatt stall and I don't want to take this stall away from somebody that's actually capable of charging up to those speeds. But there's nobody else here right now. Um, but that's pretty much it. I'm going to update you guys again after we finish charging. In the meantime, I'm probably going to run into Walmart and use the restroom, maybe look for some Hot Wheels, but we'll talk again in a few minutes. Okay, update. Looks like we are fully charged, as you can see. Our range has dropped off significantly to account for the colder weather and all of that freeway driving that we just did. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the car and then we're gonna go back to the cabin and uh, relax. We'll see you guys there in a few minutes. All right, as you guys can see, it is the next day. By the time we got back to the cabin, it was too dark to really do any filming and we were pretty exhausted, so we went straight to bed. Um, speaking of which, let me show you guys around the cabin real quick. It's pretty cute. It's this dog-friendly Airbnb up north. Here's a quick look around. It's not huge. There's a loft up there where Babe is still sleeping and the ID4 is parked in the back. Let's go back there and check out the range estimate and see how that cold weather has affected it. I don't know how it is where you guys live, but here in Arizona, snow's a bit of a rarity. So I've just been in awe of this scenery and I've been snapping pictures of the ID4 in this picture perfect setting. All morning, you guys know me, I love taking pictures of my car. Speaking of the ID4, there it is. It looks fantastic. It actually handled the drive up here really well. It didn't even flinch driving up this snowy driveway but let's hop inside and check out the range estimate. We'll start here in the center gauge cluster. That is where the range estimate is displayed. As you can see here, we're sitting at 77%, which equates to 177 miles. And with some quick math that I'll show you guys on the screen here, we can determine what the ID4 is estimating its max range to be. That comes out to 230 miles of max range, which is a far cry away from the 304 miles that was estimated when we left Phoenix, Arizona yesterday afternoon. And that's a consequence of the colder climate up here, as well as the inclined freeway driving that we were doing between Flagstaff and Phoenix. And while that's a pretty steep drop off, that's not something that's uncharacteristic for electric vehicles in general. I'm actually pretty impressed with the ID4 and the way that it has handled these colder climates, especially the resistance to phantom drain. If you guys recall last night, we charged to 80% before heading over to the cabin from those Electrify America stations and the car has only lost 3% sitting out here in the snow overnight since then. But I think that's going to do it for this video. We're actually out here celebrating our baby moon and I know my wife is inside hungry. So we're going to go grab some brunch and enjoy the rest of this Flagstaff scenery. Thanks for watching this far into the video. If you liked what you saw, leave me a like below and subscribe to the channel and leave me your thoughts on the ID4's range in the comment section below. If you're considering your first EV, is the ID4 on your mind now that you know how it handles colder climates? But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. This has been Blake Check and that's a wrap.